America did not exist. Four centuries of work, bloodshed, loneliness, and fear created this land. We built America, and the process made us Americans. A new breed, rooted in all races, stained and tinted with all colors, a singing ethnic anarchy. Then, in a little time, we became more alike than we were different. A new society, not great, but fitted by our very thoughts for greatness. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Twain. Okay. Perhaps you recognize those inspiring words from one of America's great writers. Uh, no, Dr. Franklin, I don't recall writing anything like that. Oh, my, of course not. They're from the pen of John Steinbeck. Back in the 20th century. Why, it seems he has nearly the same spirit as the founding fathers themselves. Well, listen to the proud elder statesman. Mr. Twain, pride is one of our national passions. Even those who overcome it are proud of their humility. Easy now. I was born honest. Fortunately, more often. Uh, Dr. Franklin is our genuine American antique. I suppose our story begins with you. Actually, it started long before even my time. It started when dreams and visions of a new world were shrouded in the myths and legends of an old world. Finally, through those early mists of uncertainty, sailed the first great adventure. This tiny ship is the Mayflower, carrying pilgrims in search of their dream, a dream of religious freedom. So, if you'll pardon an old man's pride, for me, this is the beginning of the American adventure. There's a land across this ocean I'm waiting to see. A land for these people who dream to be free. So stand by the mainsail, the fierce storms will race. A lot with King Mates, our King Neptune will place. You think that these land lovers never would last. This cargo of pilgrims will be for the mass. It's land home, we hardies, at last we've arrived. And praise be to God, here they all have survived. But a look for this wilderness brings me to dread that the first bitter winter may leave all more dead. They call themselves pilgrims, these poor wretched souls with a dream. for survival that gained but a tiny toehold in the vast, untamed wilderness. In the decades that followed, a new challenge began to emerge. We were growing more and more apart from the mother country. Passion began to govern, and she never governed wisely.
Finally, the time had come to speak with one voice in a declaration of independence. Jefferson, have you finished the new draft yet? Those are new drafts all over the floor, Dr. Franklin. It seems one stroke of this pen brings two changes from Congress. I told you John Adams should have written this. Oh, by his own admission, you can write circles around him. Mr. Adams has not been prisoner in this law for 17 days. I shall continue tomorrow. You must continue now. Thomas, it is difficult to make 13 clocks chime at the same time, but we must carefully justify the separation. And Dr. Franklin, while you slept soundly through the meeting this afternoon, we did manage to justify separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creation with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, come
leaders like Douglas got us into this mess. He only wanted freedom, not war. Well, listen to my abolitionist brother. What? Pa, he's going to make a real good Philly Yankee. We got a good call, Johnny Red. Why, both of you, you're going to ruin Pa's birthday. No, no. Ain't nothing going to ruin today. We're all together. That's what counts. Now, you go ahead, Mr. Brady. All right, everybody. Oh, real still now. <laughs> New York. 
Oh, Carnegie Hall, hey. It never lasts. Donating libraries. Andy, that's a grand idea. It's an age for grand ideas. An era for innovation. A dawn for new awareness. A time to challenge the frontiers of a new century. Before this depression, we sure had a 
enjoyed special lessons. Hold it. But you I know, think that's Will Rod. We've begun to believe that the height of civilization was an automobile, a radio, and a bathroom. Of course, now we're a whole lot smarter. Now Congress wants to trim down the Navy so it'll fit into the bathtub too. <laughs> you know, it seems to me like we're the only nation in the world that waits till we get in the war before we start getting ready for it. Yesterday,
I take the founding fathers never dreamed of an America like this. <laughs> of course not. We weren't dreamers, we were visionaries. That is why our Constitution withstands the rigors of time. Easy now, Dr. Franklin. This nation is still just the youngster, don't you know? Why, some countries have been around for 50 centuries. We're uh, barely even a third. That's true. Look what we've accomplished in that tiny span of time. My dear doctor, earlier you found John Steinbeck so inspired. But he also sounded this morning. We now face the danger which the past has been the most destructive to the human success, plenty, comfort, and ever-increasing leisure. No dynamic people has ever survived these dangers. I may have invented these bifocals I'm wearing, but I can assure you they are not rose-colored. Mr. Twain, the golden age never was the present age, but with human liberty, we can fulfill the promise and meaning of America. To everyone a chance, believe Thomas Wolfe, to all people, regardless of their birth, right to live, to work, to be themselves, and to become whatever their visions can combine to make them. This is the promise of America. Mr. Twain, it is easy to see, hard to foresee, but I foresee the American adventure to continue a long, long time.